Bachman has made some strange models and choices in the past, but there's one thing I always enjoy, and that is the rolling stock. Troublesome trucks, tankers, flatbeds, they work with almost any style of modeling. And this year for Christmas, I was lucky enough to be gifted one of the newest, the Troublesome Tanker, or Troublesome Truck Number 6 to be specific. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like me and not as familiar with this newer stuff. This tanker is from Bwaba, or the Africa scenes in Bwaba. Yeah, I know, when I say troublesome tanker, I normally think of these things, but these are pretty much the standard ones you see in Bwaba. It may surprise you guys to know I still haven't and will not watch that, so you tell me. That aside though, I did think this was a fun little piece. I mean, it's a purple tanker, plus he looks like he's tripping on some sort of synthetically made hallucinogen. So today I thought it'd be fun to weather him up and show you guys the methods I use to do such. Again, I may not have watched Bubba, but thankfully the wiki has plenty of references, so let's just get into it. Let's talk about what we're gonna need. These tankers aren't the most dirty, but they have quite a bit of grime? Their fair share at the very least. Now, from what I can tell, it's mostly just darker colors, so for this we're going to mostly use that. Instead of using just a solid black since it is a bit toned down, or the weathering seems to be, we also will be using this light gray from Dave's. And though we can't see a whole bunch on the chassis of the tanker, for example, there's not a lot of rust or buildup as we can see, later on I still hope to use some brown and will be using this brown paint for other things. I'll also be showing you guys a quick and easy method to simulate airbrushing. But again, before we jump into that, let's get into this powder application. Alright, first things first, the tanker itself. This thing is very shiny, very nice, reflective, and immediately we're going to fight that with a coat of matte clear. This not only is going to make it look a bit more toned down, but give the powders we use a standing point, something they can actually stick to. For safety and to make sure I don't get it too dirty, I also remove the face at this point. Aw, oh, dang it. What a goofy bastard. And now we start with our weathering powders. Now, the first thing I did was tone down the black I normally use with a little bit of that Dave's, like I mentioned. And essentially at this part, you're just going to work it into every small crevice. As you can see, I'm applying it pretty heavily on the taker bands and then just wiping it off. And that ends up creating the effect that there is something built up under these. Eventually, we also will be discoloring the tank itself, but for now, I also use a cotton swab to remove any excess. Next, we do the same thing, but instead of the boiler bands, we're focusing on the rivets. This process is a lot like the last, pretty quick, and involves a lot of wiping away. But like I said with the boiler bands, the powder sticks to the back of the rivets, giving them a bit of extra detail. And at this point, that's really all we're focusing on. Now we come in with the brown weathering powder, and this was a bit more uh, messy to be honest. I basically did the same thing, but focused this more in the areas where the wood on the tanker is. And also slowly started to discolor the chassis and throw in bits of just random brown uh, in spots I thought could use it. Now, you're actually gonna see me come back and cover up this brown with a bit more of that toned down black later. And the point of that is so this can serve as a bottom layer and help me out with the discoloring process. And here is our tanker as of now. It's definitely not as uh, clean as it was before. Now, at this point, there's a little bit more I want to do as well. You may remember that wood area I mentioned. That is typically on the front of the tanks, and though it's not brown in uh, Bubba, I still wanted to make mine brown. So using some Tamiya paint, I did just that. It's 
It's a small detail, but I think it helps. And now at this point, we focus a bit more on the heavier weathering. In the actual reference pictures, we can see the weathering is a bit more sporadic, and that's what we're gonna go for now. Basically using a smaller amount of the powder mixture and just throwing it wherever I think it would look good. Like the bottom of the tanker or around the extra corners, you see what I mean. And of course, we seal that in with a coat of matte clear. Now, earlier I mentioned something about a airbrushing method, and I figured this project would be a cool way to show it to you guys. This is very simple. All you need is whatever you're airbrushing, a can of spray paint, personally, I'm using the Tamiya Red Brown, and a plastic bag. It really is this simple. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is take the plastic bag and line it up where you don't want the weathering to go. As you can see, I'm putting it over the uh, purple part in this video. Now, this isn't a normal masking. You don't wanna tape it down or make it a clean break, more just have it to protect larger areas. It's okay if it works its way up a little bit. And once you have the bag placed in a way you think is safe, start spraying. But do not spray the wagon directly. Spray the box or the ground next to it. Basically, the paint that doesn't stick to the bottom and jumps up will then jump onto the wagon. You can spray the wagon more directly, but I don't recommend that unless you have a bit more practice. And basically, rinse and repeat this process until you're satisfied. And that quickly, we not only have a detailed chassis, but have simulated airbrush detailing. Now comes the fun part, which is reassembly, and really isn't too complicated. Off camera, I also sprayed his wheels the same brown the chassis has been sprayed. And to put the face back on, we use just a bit of blue tack. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the completed Troublesome Truck number six. Definitely a fun project, and I want to say a hidden gem from Bachman. This was something that I made fun of at first. I really thought this tanker was just kind of goofy. After doing this, I want a entire, I want a hundred of them. I don't think my engines would like that, but they're definitely a fun piece to have. And on the chance you have one of these guys or ever want to weather a wagon in a similar method, hopefully this video helps you out a bit too. I always like to say if I can do it, you guys can too, and that's because it, it's just true. None of this is really too complicated. All it really takes is some time, and let me tell you, this one was definitely worth it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for even more train content. And on the chance you guys would like more weathering tutorials, be sure to let me know in the comments. There's quite a few engines I still have to weather, so I could give them videos like this if you guys wanted. All of that aside though, really quick, huge thank you and shout out to my patrons for making videos like this possible, and a special shout out to Aiden Washburn, Kerbo Models, Daniel 14 Duck, and Logan Harrison, as these four are the winners who won this month's giveaway. Expect some Scarlowy Railway drip coming very soon. And on the chance you'd like to support the channel more, or want to be a part of future giveaways, be sure to check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description. All of that aside though, and I feel like I've said that a hundred times, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go wash this weathering powder off my hands, and with all of that being said, thanks again for watching guys, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.